If you know the basics of gradients but aren't sure how to use the updated gradient features in your photo editing, here are three great effects you can try right now. Now the first effect that you can create using gradients is lighting effects. Selecting the gradient tool by pressing G, we'll go up to the options bar and make sure we're using the gradient mode. From there, I'll go to the gradient preview and choose the foreground to transparent gradient within the basics folder. Next, I'll choose a radial gradient in this particular case, but we can update this later if necessary. And then I'll make sure dither is enabled and method is set to perceptual. Now I'll click and drag out like so to create a new gradient on my image. Now I want to go and change the color of this light source. So I'll double click on the centermost point in this case because I'm using a radial gradient to update that particular color of the gradient. Going to the color picker, I'll choose some kind of bright blue color, for example, like this and click OK. Now to blend this gradient into the photo so it looks a little bit more natural, with the gradient fill layer selected, we'll go to the layer blending mode and change this down here to linear dodge or linear light, depending on your photo. You can also experiment with a few other options, but in this case, I'll choose the linear dodge add option. Since this is a little bit too intense, I'll go to the opacity slider and bring down the opacity of that gradient so it blends in a little bit better. Let's say I don't actually like this radial gradient and instead I want to use a linear gradient. While that gradient fill layer is highlighted and my gradient tool is active, I can adjust these settings by now clicking on the linear gradient for example, and now go and refine this gradient as necessary to update my effect. I could also go and double click on that color swatch to go and change the color of this gradient as necessary to better fit my photo. Updating that to a darker blue, I'm happy with that and I'll click OK. Now let's add an additional light source from the opposite side of the photo. Still with the same settings as before, hold the shift key so that we create a new gradient fill layer. While holding shift, I'll click and drag out like so. This will create a new gradient fill layer and I'll update this gradient fill type to be a radial gradient. Clicking on the center color swatch to access the color picker, I'll change this to an orange color for example. I'll click OK. Now with that gradient fill layer selected, I'll change the layer blending mode once again to either linear dodge add or to linear light. In this case, I like linear dodge add once again, so I'll click on that. Reducing the opacity of that layer to blend it in as necessary, we can now click and drag on this gradient to refine it as we need, or we can update those colors as well. But turning this on and off, you can see the cool difference that we've added to this photo, adding a couple of really easily customizable lighting effects. So this was the first effect that you can use the gradient tool for. Going into example two, let's see what we can do here. In this example, let's say I want to have this image fade to transparency from the top of the image to go and use in a graphic design project. To make this really easy, we can use a layer mask and a foreground to transparent gradient. Clicking on the image layer, I'll add a layer mask by clicking the layer mask icon. And then with my gradient tool selected, gradient mode enabled, I'll make sure that I'm using the foreground to transparent gradient within the basics folder. Going to the linear gradient option, mode set to normal, opacity set to 100%, dither enabled, and method set to perceptual, I'll make sure that the foreground color is set to black, so that will add transparency to our layer mask. And with that layer mask selected, we can now click and drag out on the image to add some transparency with our gradient fading it from fully black on our layer mask, which means fully transparent, back into visibility down here. We can now refine this by adjusting these points as necessary, depending on the style that we want for this photo. Then once you're happy with the result, you could just export this image as a PNG file to preserve the transparency from this final effect. Now this brings us into the third and my favorite way of using gradients inside of Photoshop. Going into example three, this time we are going to add a gradient that adds a glow behind our subject. To make this really easy so that our subject is not affected, I'll click on my image layer and then select my subject by clicking select subject in the contextual taskbar while that image layer is selected. This will create an automatic selection of our subject and we're now ready to go and create our gradient. With the gradient tool selected, same settings as we've used in the other examples, this time I'll go and choose a black to white gradient just for now. 
With the radial gradient enabled, since I want to have this expand outwards in a circular fashion from the horizon, while the selection is active, I can just click and drag out like so to create that gradient. This will create a gradient fill layer that will apply that active selection onto the layer mask. Since this layer mask is restricting our gradient to only appear within the confines of our subject, we need to invert this layer mask by clicking on it and pressing Command or Control I to invert it. Now our gradient is applied to the background. To blend this gradient into our image, I'll change the layer blending mode of this gradient down here to soft light in this particular example. Now we can go and update the colors of this gradient by clicking on the gradient preview to reactivate that gradient. And inside of the properties panel, we can access all of our gradient controls. I'll scroll down to the color settings and I'll double click on the center color, which is the black in this case. Double clicking on that color to access the color picker, we can now go and change this to a orange color to match the sunset in this case. For this example, I'll choose this gold orange and click OK. Now I'll click on the outer color of the gradient, double clicking there to access the color picker. I'll set this to black and click OK. Now I can go and scale this gradient as necessary to refine the effect of this photo to make that orange color more or less dominant as necessary. If the effect is still too intense, we can of course bring down the opacity of that gradient fill layer to refine the result as necessary. But what I love about this is that you can add really cool coloring effects all with a simple gradient. So turning that on and off, you can see the gigantic difference that that makes in the color of our photo, all with one simple gradient that we could easily customize the colors of. Now, if you have a hard time remembering all of these settings related to the gradient tool, be sure to grab a copy of my free gradient tool cheat sheet that you can find in the description below. Think of it as like a handy reference guide the next time you're working with the new gradient mode inside of Photoshop. After you download your copy of that cheat sheet and you're ready for more gradient tips, check out this video right here where I give you a deep dive lesson on everything you need to know about the updated gradient tool features in Photoshop. Again, just click the video right here to watch that and I hope to see you there.